Peter Duell. In the early 1970s, this talented young actor charmed TV viewers with his role as a lovable outlaw Hannibal Hayes on the hit western Alias Smith & Jones. A veteran of such shows as Gidget and Love on a Rooftop, Duell was living the Hollywood dream. Or so it seemed. In 1971, handsome 31-year-old Peter Duell was a big star on the small screen. Life should have been great, right? Guess again. He wasn't a happy man at all with his personal life. On this episode of Mysteries and Scandals, we'll take a look at the action-packed career of Hollywood rogue Peter Duell and the inner torment that sabotaged his happiness. I remember appealing to him when he said he was so depressed. He said, I just, I, living is so hard. I think he took out any problems he might have career-wise or any other things in his personal life. He took them out on himself. We'll also explore the circumstances surrounding Peter's shocking death. I heard that they found him under the Christmas tree with the gun in his hand. Now, how it happened, I really don't know. And for the first time, Duel's co-star shares his thoughts about his friend. I was shocked, but not entirely surprised. I hate to have to say that, but it's true. I wasn't entirely surprised. I'm A.J. Benza. Join me as we piece together the puzzle of Peter Duel. What led this complex man down the path of self-destruction? In the early morning hours of New Year's Eve, 1971, 31-year-old actor Peter Duell was found at his home in the Hollywood Hills, the victim of a gunshot to the head. No one was really sure what happened. The only solid fact was that Duell had been drinking heavily the night before. LAPD Sergeant Paul Estrada was called out that morning to investigate the shooting. He could have picked up the gun and he could have held it to his head uh, when it was diminished capacity and pulled the trigger, but there was no note. There was no evidence why he did it. To this day, Peter's friends and family can only speculate about why he ended his life. Duell had a promising acting career with enough talent to last a lifetime. Joe Swirling was a producer on Alias Smith & Jones. He was a terrific actor. Uh, he, he, he had wonderful comedy timing. He was just a very talented guy. If talent wasn't the issue, what other forces were at work? Maybe you look back at Duell's life can provide some clues. Peter Ellsworth Duell was born on February 24, 1940. He was the oldest of three siblings raised in the small town of Penfield, New York, where his dad was the town doctor. Pamela Duell was Peter's younger sister. My mother and father bought a wonderful old house over 100 years old uh, in 1947, and my father's medical offices were in part of the house, and we had a couple of acres, so it was really quite idyllic as far as raising a family. It was during his childhood that Peter developed a lifelong love of nature. His acting ability was discovered in elementary school and grew throughout his high school years. Peter really was excelling even then. He got recognition for that and then went on to star in all of the productions. After graduating high school in 1957, 17-year-old Peter enrolled in New York's St. Lawrence University as an English major. My parents wanted Peter to finish at St. Lawrence and, and get a degree. But I think at that time, when Dad saw what Peter had, that he wouldn't be really furthering himself to stay at St. Lawrence. I think that Daddy just did say, listen, you're wasting your time and my money. Go be an actor. Smart man. 19-year-old Peter took his dad's advice. In 1959, Duell headed to Manhattan and spent the next few years boning up on his acting skills and working off-Broadway. In 1962, Duell landed a gig in a touring production of Take Her, She's Mine, that brought him out to Hollywood. Biographer Jim Parrish. He decided to stay and he said, I really like Broadway, but I want to be a success. And to be a success, you have to have a name. So he decided that he would get a name from the movies. And that's where he gave himself five years and said, I'm gonna do it in five years and then go back to New York City. Duell's first celluloid adventure was in the US Department of Defense training film called Espionage Target U. My friend is willing to pay high very, very high. It's impossible. There's sentries, fences. Be like trying to break into Fort Knox. How high, McCredo? Eight thousand dollars. Enough to split many ways. 
I've had it. Sit down, Pete. Okay, so it wasn't exactly the big time, but you got to start somewhere. By 1965, 25-year-old Duell was on a roll. Peter went out and almost immediately got began to get parts on television. His first series was with Sally Field and Gidget, and he played her brother-in-law, the psychologist. He played kind of a square guy, but uh, that set him. The following year, Peter was cast opposite well, Judy Carn as the lead in a romantic comedy series called Love on a Rooftop. Hey, when are we going to get married? Look, Julie, I love you when I want to marry you, but I'm an apprentice architect and you're an art student. You know the trouble with you? You've no adventure in your soul. Well, then why did you propose? Comic Rich Little co-star. Love on a Rooftop was kind of like Barefoot in the Park. Um, it involved a married couple and I was the nutty, crazy next door neighbor. What do people want most in this world? Privacy? Didn't last more than one season. It should have gone longer because it had a big following, but Peter didn't seem that upset that it folded because he wanted to do other things. I think he wanted to really get into movies. That was his aim. Within the end of his five years, he got a contract with Universal Pictures. We have got a $100,000 cargo. So what? So we're suckers, that's what. Universal saw star quality in the 27-year-old actor and signed him on to an exclusive seven-year contract. In 1968, Peter landed a minor role in the action-adventure movie, The Hell with Heroes. Now, come on, who wants to save his pal? To see Peter have all these lines was very exciting, and uh, he got killed in the film, and that was, that was awful for us to see. I remember that affecting me greatly. Author Marianne Ruth. From the outside, it seemed that he had it all. He had a, a career that seemed promising. He's young, healthy, and good-looking. Yeah, but appearances can be deceiving. Although Peter had the talent and the drive to make it in Hollywood, he wasn't prepared for the price of fame. When we come back, Duel rides into prime time with a hit series. But the trail was anything but happy. Hank, we'll have it. Refill has three blades and soft cushions that give you the clip. By 1968, 28-year-old Peter Duell was a bona fide television star. The irony was that while Peter was achieving professional success, his personal life was in a tailspin. He was frustrated with the roles he was being offered. So Duell found fulfillment elsewhere, lending his voice to the peace effort protesting the conflict in Vietnam. He was very anti our involvement in the war. But Peter went and um, campaigned for Eugene McCarthy, and he went to Chicago for the convention and uh, was quite involved with it. I was afraid Peter would get hurt because of demonstrations. This is when they had all the riots in Chicago and uh, the police beat up quite a few protesters. He was extremely affected by that. And when he was telling me about it, I, I could see that, that it had had an enormous effect on him. And I know that he was very concerned about the environment and all, all kinds of world problems. Peter warned his fans about fooling with Mother Nature in this audio recording. Concern for the environment is not a fad, no matter what anybody tells you. It's not something to be involved in today and forgotten tomorrow. It has got to be a continuing fight to make this country a healthier, more beautiful place to live in, for us today and for our kids a few years from now. Back in Hollywood, Duel guest starred on an episode of 1970 television series, Insight. I don't want any Verdi or any repertoire or any of that junk. I don't even like opera. You will like opera with me? No, no, no. I came to you for one reason. I was told that you were in financial difficulty and that you would give me a break. Well, why do you think I put up with all this Giovanni this and Lucrezia that? Shortly after that appearance, Duel hit the jackpot in 1970 with the TV western, alias Smith & Jones. Glenn Larson created the series. Peter was sort of the automatic. I'd have to say, maybe we dragged him in kicking and screaming. Uh, I'm not sure he wanted to be in a western at that time. Ben Murphy was Duel's co-star. Their magic on the tube contributed to the show's success. There's the on-camera relationship, which was an amazing chemistry, and I haven't found it again. And I've spent my life looking for it, and I have not found it. Monty Laird served as Ben Murphy stand-in on Alias. They had such a uh, friendship, right? You could see it on the show, you know. The way they acted, the way they performed, uh, the audience just loved them. 
But the hours spent on the set made Duell more than a little weary. He would talk about the frustration of it and the, the, the long hours, getting up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and the 12-hour days. You know what it's like. Uh, and you have no other life, really. He hated that part. Peter became depressed, and the more depressed he got, the more he found solace in the bottle. Or maybe it was the other way around. Alcohol was definitely uh, a contributing factor to a lot of his unhappiness. It seemed as though Peter, when he drank, he wouldn't stop. The word around was that Peter had a drinking problem. But he didn't come in with slurred speech or, or too tired to work or anything like that. When he came in to work, he, he did his work and he did it well and you would never know. Like a lot of people who drink, he tended to drive sometimes and that proved to be his downfall. One night after a long day of taping, Pete went for drinks with some guys from the series, including actor Dennis Fimple. In light of the fact that we had to go to work in the morning, most of us left and uh, he stayed. So I guess he just uh, got in the car and took off and drank a little more, and resulting in an accident. Two people were injured, and then he was brought up in front of the court, despite what the studio did to uh, downplay it. Peter Duell was busted big time. The accident was a major turning point for Duell, and he knew it was time to clean up his act. The only question was, could he? Straight ahead, Peter plunges into a desperate battle with alcoholism. In the fall of 1970, Peter Duell was arrested for drunk driving after causing an accident that left two people injured. Duell apologized at his hearing and then decided to seek help. He drank, and he hated himself when he didn't control it. He was depressed then, and he was very honest about it. He was distressed that he couldn't stop, that he wouldn't stop. He believed wholeheartedly in the AA program, and he would go faithfully on his lunch hour from Universal. On certain days he would be very up and, and uh, upbeat and kind of manic. And uh, on other days he, he would be very intense and not in the mood to uh, shoot the breeze. And of course when the camera was rolling, all of that disappeared. The show premiered in January 1971 and developed an instant following. Peter became a true celebrity, famous but for the wrong reason. Peter had just very high expectations of, uh, of what he should be in the world, what he should do as an actor, the type of roles he should do, that it should be meaningful, and that filming should be meaningful. It should express the human condition, or it should solve the world's social problems, or it should do something where it's not just frivolous entertainment, quote unquote. There was something deep inside of him that, that kept him from enjoying fame and from uh, uh, the exhilaration. I was probably a little concerned that uh, Peter might bow out of the series. And I think that being in a, a small television show like Alias Smith and Jones was not what he wanted for himself. Apparently, Peter felt he had more important work to do. In November 1971, he ran for a seat on the board of the Screen Actors Guild. Duell wanted to be an advocate for actors' rights. When you're working, a lot of times the rules are overlooked, fudged, blah, blah, whatever. And uh, he wanted to get the, that straightened out and to, um, he had some definite ideas as to what he wanted. He, being a campaigner, went out and campaigned for a board seat, but unfortunately uh, he didn't win. The telegram that came saying, good luck, I mean, that, you know, you didn't do it, but, uh, you know, thanks for running or whatever it said. And he, put it on the wall and said adios and shot it. Actor Roger Davis was a close friend of Peter's. I'm sure it was a blow on the way to things adding up and the list adding up to too many minuses, not enough pluses, and, and, um, and then you make some decision that it's not worth it. I always got the sense that he took these things personally and that, that, that he was frustrated that he couldn't do enough to help solve the problems of the world. Peter also couldn't stay sober. Friends and family watched him slowly slipping away. He stood there and told me how sad he was. And I began to cry and walked over to him and 
put my arms around him. And uh, I said, you can't leave me. And he said, I watched you. He said, you'll be fine. And I, uh, I begged him not to hurt himself. But there were definitely signs. There were definitely signs that he had thought about it. And that old theory that if they talk about it, they won't do it, well, that's, that's not true. Pamela and her family learned that lesson the hard way. After a drunken evening at his home, Peter picked up a loaded pistol. I understand he put it to his temple, fired one shot. Just like that, TV cowboy Peter Duell was dead. But what pushed him over the edge? Up next, an account of Duell's final moments. In the early hours of New Year's Eve, 1971, police arrived at the Hollywood Hills home of TV star Peter Duell. The 31-year-old actor was dead from a gunshot to the head. Investigators wondered if Duell's death was an accident or a suicide. Peter's girlfriend, Diane Ray, and pal Richard Wright were in the house when the shooting occurred. LAPD Sergeant Paul Estrada arrived on the scene that morning. They stated that sometime during the night, the male, who was later identified as Peter Duell, had uh, gotten up from bed and went into the front room. And shortly thereafter, they heard a pop sound, sounding like a gunshot. And when they went into the room, they found uh, Mr. Duell lying on the floor with a gun by his side. The two were questioned by police, but they couldn't shed much light on the tragedy. Diane was very upset. She cried off and on. Richard was very quiet. He didn't say too much unless we you know, came forth and asked him certain questions. But they both were uh, so, uh, distraught and uh, concerned about what happened that night and couldn't furnish no further uh, you know, evidence or anything like that why it actually transpired. The only sure thing was that Duel was blind drunk. His body registered a .31 alcohol level. One more drink and the guy probably would have passed out cold. I don't believe if he did kill himself that he would have done it if he had been sober. I am sure of that. The final ruling from the coroner was uh, he died at his own hands. And uh, it could be argumentative whether it was suicide or uh, done accidentally. And I think that's where it it stayed. Like I lost a brother, it took a long time. I mean, it took, it was, the harsh reality was the next day we had to shoot. Roy Huggins was the executive producer of Alias Smith and Jones. I learned that uh, the network ordered us to stay in production, just replace Pete Duell, stay in production. Alias narrator Roger Davis was tapped as Duell's replacement. Davis learned the news from Roy Huggins. And I said, geez, um, well, what happened? When, when's he going to be back? Roger, he's shot himself and he's dead. <sighs> Tough moment. Despite attempts to keep Alias going, the show was canceled a year later. I just don't think the show had quite the same flavor. Uh, it was close. I think it was remarkably close, but not quite the same. And I'm sure if Peter were alive today, and I would go, Petey, when did you do it? I'm sure that he would give me that impish grin, and he would smile, and you'd love him. And he'd go, I goofed up, you know. But I'm not sure he wouldn't do it again. Peter Duell's parents flew out from New York for a memorial service on January 2nd, 1972 at the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine in Pacific Palisades. It was a great tribute to him that uh, two or 3,000 people showed up. And then we all flew back to Rochester with Peter's body. Peter's hometown funeral was covered on local television. 
Those who remembered paid tribute at a memorial service this afternoon at the Penfield Baptist Church. His parents, Dr. and Mrs. Ellsworth Duell, remembering how Pete, Brother Jeff, and Sister Pam used to cut up during the morning service. Peter was buried in Oakwood Cemetery back in his hometown of Penfield, New York, in the countryside he loved so much. Family and friends still mourn the loss of their friend and brother. I have pictures all over our home. And he's, he's very alive to me in a lot of ways. And one of the wonderful things, benefits of his career was that I get to see him laughing and walking, riding a horse, talking, because he's on, he's on film. I figured I'd remember Pete a horseback. That's the way I like to remember him, on horseback. See him, picture him, riding away, turned around halfway in the saddle with a big smile saying, Yahoo, here we go. Peter Duell wanted to make a difference in the world. Too bad he never gave himself a chance to fulfill that dream. I'm A.J. Benza. Join me the next time we explore the high price of fame on Mysteries and Scandals.